Hello guys, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'll be talking about the KiwiCo hand crank flashlight. I'll be talking about how this flashlight works and what each part does in the system. Finally, I will be also showing you how to build this flashlight for yourself. Without anything else to say, let's get into the video. First, we can start by explaining how the flashlight works. If you turn on the flashlight and start cranking it, you will see that the brightness of the LEDs will increase, if it's not already at its max power. When you crank the flashlight, the energy of your hand motion is turned into electrical energy through the stepper motor. This electricity goes through the rest of the system and lights up the LEDs. If you stop turning the crank, then you will see that the LEDs will still stay lit, but you would expect them to turn off. The LEDs will still get electricity even if you stop cranking the crank because half of the energy of the crank goes into the capacitor. This is just a device that stores electricity. Now that you have stopped cranking, the capacitor kicks into action and starts giving electricity to the LEDs so that they continue to work until eventually the power runs out. When electricity is moved from the capacitor to the LEDs, to make sure that the electricity doesn't go back to the stepper motor, we add a diode to the bridge in the electricity, so that we can force it to go into one direction. In this case, it will be the LEDs. On the way to the LEDs, the electricity is regulated with a resistor. This is just a tool that allows a certain amount of electricity to go into your LEDs. It slows down the electricity so that the LEDs can get the perfect amount of electricity that it needs. This prevents the LEDs from burning out after getting too much power. To turn the system on and off, the switch comes into play. In the on position, a very small metal bar in the switch moves and touches two wires. This allows the current to flow and turn on the flashlight. In the off position, the metal bar is touching just a normal piece of metal in the wire, which disconnects the flow of the current. Finally, to connect all the parts together, the breadboard comes into play. Under each hole, there is a clip, and if another wire is added into the row or column, then the wires can be connected together. Now that I've covered all the components of the flashlight, let's actually make it. Start with the case of the flashlight and get your stepper motor. Screw the stepper motor into the holes of the casing. Now take both the red wires. One of them should be solid red and the other one should be red and black. Connect them both on either end of the stepper motor connector. Now that we have that connection, we can connect it into the breadboard. Put the solid red wire into slot one in the first column, and the red black wire into the first slot in the, in the seventh column. Put your flashlight aside and get one of the LEDs and snip the leg so the leg that was originally longer stays longer and the leg that was originally shorter stays shorter. Now take both of the white wires. Connect one end of the solid white wire into the long end of the LED and the white black wire to the short end of the LED. Now after connecting the LED to the wire, put the solid white wire in column two and hole two of the breadboard. Then put the white black wire in column seven and hole eight of the breadboard. If all the connections are secure, then when you spin the crank on the flashlight, the light bulb should light up. After you stop turning the crank, the light should turn off. Now, take the diode. This is the wire with the orange-black thing on in the center. Snip each side of the wire in half, and then bend them over in 90 degrees like this. Then, on the breadboard, connect the orange side of the diode to column 1 and hole 3. Then, put the black side of the diode in column 2 and hole 5. Now move the solid white wire from the LED to column 4, hole 4, and the white black wire to column 7, hole 3. Now it's time to add the resistor. This is the device that slows down the flow of electricity so the LEDs don't burn itself out. Snip each side of the resistor in half and bend it over down 90 degrees. Now, after you do that, you can connect one side of the resistor to column 2, hole 2, and the other side to column 4, 
hole 3. It doesn't matter which side is in the hole as the resistor slows down electricity no matter what. To make the light bulb still work even after we stop turning the crank, we can add the capacitor. Be sure not to snip the wiring off the capacitor like we did with the diode and the resistor. Attach a solid blue wire to the longer leg of the capacitor and the blue-black wire to the shorter end of the capacitor. After doing that, connect the solid blue wire to column 2, hole 1, and the blue-black wire to column 7, hole 2. Now we can move the solid white wire of the LED again so we can make way for the switch. This allows us to turn on and off our flashlight. Move the solid white wire again to column 6, hole 4. Now we can add the switch. Put one of the wires in column 4, hole 4, and the other one in column 6, hole 5. Again, it doesn't matter where each wire is put because you don't need the wires to be oriented in a specific way for your system to get disconnected. Now that we have the flashlight working, let's do some stuff to make it look nice and tidy. Wrap the cables of the stepper motor around. Then add some thin sticky foam to the capacitor and put it near the place where the stepper motor is. Then snip some of the wiring of the last LED that we have. Keep the longer leg slightly longer. Then move the first LED from the current circuit that we have built. Find your mirrored acrylic and add a thin piece of sticky foam to the back of it. Now, stick in both of the LEDs and peel the covering off the acrylic. Then add the clear acrylic to the top of the thin sticky film. Now, after doing that, we can add the wire back. Put the solid white wire in any of the long legs of the LEDs. And put your white black wire in the short leg on the LED that still hasn't been connected yet. Now, you can connect the remaining two legs with the black wire in any orientation. Now you can add a piece of thick sticky foam to the bottom of the breadboard and add it into your flashlight body. Now with the LED shield part, add it to the narrow part of your flashlight and right after, add the LEDs to the wide mounting slot. Then add the switch to the proper slot on your flashlight body so you can turn it on and off. On the other side, using sticky foam, add in the clear windows. Finally, you can screw in both sides of the flashlight together and it should be complete. Now we have built a hand crank flashlight. If you guys like the video, then you might like other content that I make here on this channel. Also, please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting below. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!